In the First World War, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was a key German ally. When Germany was defeated, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy was overthrown. Peace terms were imposed on Austria in the Treaty of Saint-Germain, signed in 1919. An additional protocol, signed in 1922, said that Austria shall not violate her economic independence by granting to any state a special regime or exclusive advantages calculated to threaten its independence. Austria had a duty of independence and was no longer at liberty to compromise its ability to conduct its affairs independently. The obvious intention of the Allies was to ensure that Germany could not rise again. If Germany and Austria were to be unified under one flag, that country would dominate much of Europe. Indeed, in the 1930s, when Adolf Hitler started to enlarge the borders of Germany, one of his first steps was marching into Austria. In 1931, before the Nazi rise to power, Germany and Austria proposed a customs union, an international agreement where two countries agree not to impose tariffs upon goods imported from the other. Other European countries immediately protested that this was a breach of the Treaty of Saint-Germain. The proposed customs union included a provision whereby neither Austria nor Germany would conclude outside deals with third parties which would damage the other. The Allied countries were concerned that this represented an enlargement of Germany's influence and a reduction in Austria's independence. However, couldn't one also say that the right to enter into treaties is a characteristic of national independence? The court acknowledged that merely entering into a customs union did not compromise Austria's independence. They said, It can scarcely be denied that the establishment of this regime does not in itself constitute an act alienating Austria's independence, for Austria does not thereby cease within her own frontiers to be a separate state with its own government and administration. However, they found that the proposed customs union did constitute a special regime and was therefore forbidden. From this case, we learn that a nation's ability to enter international agreements and its ability to provide its own government and administration are characteristics of national independence, but this particular agreement was incompatible with Austria's earlier obligations. As usual, however, international law was useless because by the time this decision was made, economic pressure from the countries of Europe had already damaged the customs union beyond repair. Mm -hmm.